With that, I was able to travel the world, see different cultures, exchange. Um, and one thing that I do is I teach these body percussion workshops. And it's very interesting because when I go to places that I don't speak their respective language, like say Japan or Italy, and I would say, Sumimasen, Nihongo ga wakarimasen. Excuse me, Japanese I don't speak. Um, and I ask, does anyone here speak English? And maybe two people, I don't be like 85 people in the class, would raise their hand and they would be like, oh my God, it's okay, I don't speak Japanese. You might not understand English, but we still communicate. We understand what that is. See, when we're babies in mommy's womb for nine months, nine months, the first mode of communication is the heartbeat. We understand. We're all rhythmic. Everything we do is rhythmic. So we've got that. Mommy's upset. She's mad at dad because he came on late. Where you at? <laughs> Her heartbeat is fast. The baby receives that information. So the baby's a little excited, a little agitated. But mom is calm and stuff. She's sitting down watching Wendy Williams or something. <laughs> you know, the baby gets that communication. So we understand what rhythm is. That's why when a toddler starts banging stuff, and it's just like they're drawn to it because they can pick up these rhythms, these patterns. And stuff. It's so easy. All we need to do is nurture that at the very beginning, at the very crux of child development early child development. And he's tuning into that, that strength that we all have, that a lot of us forget. See, we forget when we're born, we learn these languages. We learn Chinese, we learn Japanese, we learn German. And we forget about the rhythm. We forget about that rhythm. We're bringing it back.